moving to order at And that's minutes. an hour off. <laughs> yeah, eight minutes after four. We're an hour off, eight minutes after five. Um, and I will adjourn our organizational meeting. And the first item on the organizational checklist is appointment of select board chair and consideration of chair's voting status. Is there a motion? Um, I'll nominate Peter Hood for chair. Okay. And that Thank you. Can, Any other nominations? And that he can vote if necessary. No, it's not vote if necessary. Vote. Oh, and he can vote. I vote. I don't just break ties. I vote. Okay. That means we shouldn't have any ties. Is there a second? Sorry. I'll second that. I was wondering about that. Hold on, I'm sorry. Maybe it's Bridget. Good night. Okay, it's been uh, moved and seconded for Peter Hood to be chairman. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, included in that motion would be that I would have voting status. Yes. And um, appointment of a vice chair. Is there a nomination? It's Liz Scherf. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Any other nominations? Okay, all those in favor of Liz, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Time and place for select board meetings. So the reason we changed was because of our now retired select board member, correct? Yes. So do we want to consider going back? What did they used to be? They used to be the first and the third, right? Or did we change no, the, we're first the first and the third? third. They were the yeah. second and the fourth, and we changed the to the first and third. Um, I guess I don't have a preference um, either. either way. What is, is it right now? Is first there, and third. First. The first and third. Are there uh, advantages uh, to folks in the finance office or anybody else right. in Does town? Does it make any difference to you guys at all? Does it line up better with payrolls or any of that? Not really. No, because payroll any difference, always, right? sometimes they're in sync right. and sometimes they're not because right. of the. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that I don't have a preference. I don't either. Liz? Uh, I don't have a preference. Well, someone make a motion. Make a motion. Well, what, what is it now? Let's just first and third. Yes, yeah, so let's third. keep it the first and third. First and third at 5 o'clock at the yes. town hall. Yeah. Is so the who motion. made the motion? Uh, I think. I did. I and I seconded it. That's All in hard. favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, time and place. We did five, first and third. Paper of record, once again, I don't really think we have any choice. Time target. Yeah. I nominate the Times Argus as the paper okay. record. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Appointment of road commissioner. Um, I'll nominate Vic Dwyer. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Eric Metivier. Oh. Does he want to be? Huh? He wants to do that? I don't know. He's not here. <laughs> no, I just think that, uh, you know, okay. it might be time to have him do it, do the whole thing. Okay. We've certainly, we've certainly been that way in the past. You know, in a way, it's not like we're going to lose Victor's expertise because he's still going to be on the select board anyway. So. I, I personally think a separation of the, the road commissioner and a select board member are not a bad thing. So I don't disagree. I mean, I'll do it, but I just wanted to bring that up. So, so in the past, we had um, Steve, who was the road commissioner and a select board member, right? That yep. was a long time he was that. And right. then when was it that it wasn't? Like, was it? Gary Gary Lamel. Gary Lamel. 
was a select I, person. I, of... I would agree that I kind of like having a second set of eyes on things. And um... I guess the question is, would you prefer not to do it? Be honest. I mean, if he's throwing up a candidate, that's telling. So yeah, exactly. I said, if, you, if he's throwing up a separate candidate, to me, that's telling, saying, that you'd rather not. I'd, well, I'd rather except, not. Except I have had several conversations through this whole road crew transition where we talked about ideally having the road commissioner and the road form in the same sort of works. Yeah. Doesn't I'd, provide two people, but we're going to have two people anyway because he's going to be on the select board. Correct. It just shortens up the chain of command, if anything. Yeah, I, I think for me, having a separation between both the road commissioner and the select board isn't a bad thing because one, you come in with a set of votes pretty, pretty much already guaranteed. Um, but I also believe in having a separation between the road foreman and the road commissioner as well, um, having a second set of eyes on, on things. so. You know, it's kind of a uh, a catch either way with the parties that are involved, without having a, an external candidate outside of Victor or Eric. Right. I mean, I love working with uh, with Eric. Don't get me wrong. I think it's well. We have we have two nominations, so we're going to vote. Okay. Right. Well, so we you, got a, you got a second. You got a second. Okay. So you either got to second both of them or second one of them, and then you can only... Well, I second both of them. How about that? Okay, okay. so Peter Hood second both. So in no particular order, all those in favor of Victor to be our road commissioner, say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. No offense, Randy. All those in favor of Randy to be road commissioner. Not really, Eric. I mean, Eric. 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 Eric, Jesus. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. I'll, I'll say aye, I guess. We could also say aye if we wanted. To. Then what happens? Then no, he no. wins three against two. Who's what? I, th I think. Um, no, no, no. You don't get to vote again. There are two candidates. You get to vote for oh, one, one candidate. Oh. I think. I think you've already done it. Right. So. Okay. You two voted, so. But only two got the vote, so there's no vote. No, three voted. One, two, no, three. But two no, but two don't. No, two voted. Well, but three. We you need four you votes. You don't have, right. You don't we don't have, have enough to You don't to have vote. a quorum with Victor abstaining from this. Right, to, exactly. I didn't know so he shouldn't have abstained. There's no reason for him to abstain. He could vote no. for himself. He can, right. vote, yeah, for he himself. can vote for himself. I just I didn't, I didn't hear him vote, so. So. Did you? Yeah, vote? yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll vote. So the me. vote is three to one. Yeah. Is yeah. that it? Okay. okay. So Victor is now our new vote. So Vic is it. Congratulations. Okay, so here comes the long list. And of course, do I have Sarah's email? I, well, I have Sarah's email that I have up about some people. Um, I've got a printed copy. Okay. Okay, but I only have the reappointments for... Um, let's, do the, let's do the reappointments first. I only have for the conservation. Oh, you know what? I never started this. Or did she she sent out an email talking about all these different she did yes i have i have that here okay. she did i had it pulled up before recording in progress haha -ha. you guys didn't tell me oh well sorry that's okay um she do you did. need a copy of it well it wouldn't make it easier yes thank you oh okay she's got it Oh, I feel nervous, blah, blah, blah. Okay, town lister, she suggests we pass over because no one has stepped forward. So I'm going to agree we're going to pass over the lister. Development review, the only one up for reappointment is Barry Rooney, and he has said yes. So is there a motion to reappoint Larry Rooney? I make the motion we appoint Larry Rooney. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. All in favor of Larry Rooney, Larry Rooney, to serve on the Development Review Board, say aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, Larry. Okay. Budget Committee. 
Uh, since no one who votes, blah, blah, blah. Don't one, we have to do six. Mitch and... Uh... Yeah, that's coming up. Oh, it's coming up. Okay, sorry. I would make a motion to... Uh, okay. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Point George Long Longnecker and Zara Vincent as they have expressed interest um, to fill until the next town meeting. Okay, I'll second that. Okay. Okay, all in favor of Zara Vincent and George Longenecker to be members of the Budget Committee, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, emergency management, Paulo Tenti has agreed to serve. Is there a motion? I don't know that we, oh, did we have to um, nominate her? I thought she was already assigned or something. I think be, she was just filling in until, oh, you until, have to do it every okay, year. Okay, so I nominate so. Paula Tenti. So you need a motion for Paula Tenti to be the emergency management yeah. person? Yep. So I just made that motion. You did? Yeah. I'll second it. And all those in favor. Okay, all those in favor. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Liz, you're a little Don't anxious. Liz is anxious about arriving anxious in my truck. She was, was a little nervous. He was going so fast around the corners. Okay. <laughs> Just what I need is a backseat driver at He was going on five. the left side of the road on a blind corner. He's like, I've got a plow. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain ethics involved in driving a plow truck. Go right down the middle of the road. Okay. Fire warden. Just reappoint, don't ask. So I did talk with Jason. He said he'd be happy to. Thank you. Yep. yep. Okay. So you will. Uh, I, would, make the I would nominate Jason. Okay. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor of Jason Merrill to be our fire warden, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Jason, thank you. Congratulations. Tree warden Gary Lamel today said, why not? I'll nominate Gary, my old friend Gary. I'll second it, Gary, for the tree warden. Okay, very important job. All those in favor of Gary Lamel to be our tree warden, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Gary. Could we take a break for a second? We have an emergency here. Oh, really? Yeah. We certainly can. Just a second. I got a text. So Dorinda, you almost got elected to look collector of delinquent taxes. Uh oh. Uh -huh. No, I almost got enough right in votes. Well, no, no, but no. I mean I have you to still have to accept it. it. No, I know. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but she, I'm wondering when she wants me to reappoint the conservation commission, which isn't on here because I don't think she knew. And is that considered a following town position of conservation, or is this? Is the Conservation Commission under, like, one of these things? That might be under, I, think, I have to add. Doesn't the Conservation Commission come up, like, April 1st or something? No, yeah. no, no, but she told me I have to do this. Is everything okay? Oh, she told you you had to do uh, it? There's a, there's, a, there's a tree and a car off the road, so nobody can get through Notch Road. Okay. Paul Sermonera told us, and he said he would cut the tree, but he's in stow in a bucket loader. So I just talked to Derek. Thank you for doing that. She's um, this what? weather. See, I'm telling you, I'm hoping Bridget is okay. She's not the kind of person who just doesn't show up, but she doesn't have her numbers either. Right. But she's she's got, she didn't even bench. try to call the town hall. And I didn't get an email from her. I mean, I've been emailing her back and forth. I know, it's just weird. I, that's why I think that so, she's the kind of person who would contact settling. us. I don't have her number. Uh. -uh. I don't either. I, don't I mean, she could be in a place where there's no service. That's been a lot of places in town. There's a lot of places in town. <laughs> yeah. right Two thirds of our beloved town. <laughs> but Eric has, I don't know what he has for a phone. I don't know what he has for phone service, but you can get him most of the time. Very seldom. He has a, does he have a beeper? Uh, okay. So, okay, let's so speaking of Eric, just while we're off topic here for a minute. Ken Coons called me today and reminded me that we have to appoint Eric as chief of the fire department since there's now the town 
fire department. Oh, so we have to do that today. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I said his timing was excellent. Maybe we should do that right now. Sure, let's do it right now. I move that we nominate, we, uh, I nominate uh, Eric Mativier as uh, to be chief of our f town fire department. And I'll second that. Okay, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Eric. See, he's, 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 he said he wouldn't be here tonight. Okay, okay. I think I think he's going to say it's full. Um, so what what is it that you need to do, Liz? I said I need to uh, reappoint um, Larry Becker. I'd like to move that we reappoint Larry Becker and John Udis to the Conservation Commission. I'll second that. Before. Okay. They, they, they were on it before. Yes, and they they want to be reappointed. Yes. Larry oh, it's Becker. like they're up. Yeah, Larry Becker and John Udis. Oh, John Udis. Okay. Yeah, for the Conservation Commission. Yeah. I talked to John Okay, today. it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're Peter, back. Peter, you seconded that, right? Uh, I, I, he, he, he seconded. seconded. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Wrightsville Beach Management Representative. Let me find that on here. George, George Leinecker has agreed right, to serve. George. Is there a motion to appoint George? I move that we appoint George Longnecker to the Wrightsville Beach Authority. Is there a second? Randy, thank you. All those in favor of appointing George to the Wrightsville Beach Board, I guess it is. Okay. Uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, I've asked Mitch if he wants to continue waiting back to here. I would suggest we just appoint yeah, him. Yeah, let's just appoint him. I'll appoint Mitch to um, be the recreation director for Middlesex. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor of appointing Mitch uh, to be our recreation director, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mitch is in. E911 coordinator, C above. Dorinda, you put that in shorthand? Is that Paula Otenti by any chance? C above. Oh. Uh, recreation director, because I didn't, uh, Mitch, do that last year. The E911 coordinator? Didn't he do that because he was dealing with the oh, private that drives with the well, and all that yes. kind of stuff? At one time he was doing it because of it tied in with the zoning. So had we passed it on to, does anyone have a book? We didn't pass it on to Kevin Thompson and Kevin became the zoning administrator. I just remember Mitch dealing with the signs, so that's why I was questioning that. But the signs for the for the for uh, the driveways trail? and all that kind of stuff. He had oh, to yeah. coordinate with them to no, make sure that's right. Fit that's right. right or whatever. He's also the sign yes, coordinator. Yes, Mitch is it. Let's reappoint him for now. Yep. I'll, re I'll move that we reappoint him to Mitch Osaki to be the E nine one one coordinator. So I'll second that. So didn't we change it to be our zoning person? No. No? It, we okay. did when it, when, yes, it did at one time, but then when Kevin took over at zoning, okay. Mitch stayed on, I think. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded for... Uh, did you do the second, Vic? I did. Mitch, to be E911 coordinator, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? He, he said he was happy to let someone else volunteer. <laughs> Mitch did in this email. <laughs> Collector of delinquent taxes. So we've had no d collector of delinquent taxes for a while now, right? No, we have not. How much does it get paid? So it's, it's not like the rate. good old days of uh, Butch. Hi, this is Liz. I was just wondering if you could pay your taxes. <laughs> Ferocious Liz. Uh, I don't know, Drinda. You don't. Do you do? Who does it now? So, by statute, it falls to the treasurer. So let's if, pass over it for now and see if we can find someone. How about that? That's what we did last year. Yeah, let's do yeah. that. But it doesn't pay anything, right? So that's it what does. It's no, it does. Rate. It's an hourly oh, rate. Oh, an hourly rate. Yeah. I like the old days when would you get eight percent, Butch Alexander? Yeah, you get you get a percentage a of their yeah. like you get the money and you get a cut of it. Yeah, yeah. 
and he was a consultant. <laughs> and, he, and he was a consultant for that's the what state. You call, that's what you call the incentive program. <laughs> he would go he, knocking on people's doors, telling them you better get your no records. sending was, out those little red slips. Okay, what's next? Okay, so CV Fiber Board is David Lawrence has agreed to serve. Is there a motion for David? I'll move. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor of David Lawrence for the CV Fiber Board? Can I just ask a question yes. before we do yes. this? Is this the position where we were having a hard time with getting anybody yep. to actually participate in the meetings? Mm -hmm. um, and I think he was the one who was not participating. And there was somebody that was. Um, acting as an assistant or something like that that had offered to attend those yeah. meetings, or they were an alternate, I think, is what it was. I think that's right. Um, I think that's right. Do we know who that person is? No, yeah, I, I don't. I feel like I just talked about it at pie breakfast with someone. Who um, was it? It wasn't Nancy Riley's husband. I don't remember. I would like to look that up and maybe pass this over for tonight and sure. look up the alternate That's information. Fine. Yep. Because we need somebody who's going to attend those meetings. Yes. I mean, somehow that whole business where we contributed that chunk of money and we expected to be on the first list and the minute we gave them the money, we got moved down the ladder. So we have a first and a second on that. Is that, and now we want we to We need do to withdraw the first and second. So yeah. I'll withdraw my second. Okay. So we withdraw and pass over. Yeah. Are you okay with with withdrawing, Liz? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Randy. Thank you. Um, waiting to hear back from Dell. Well, I guess we wait to hear back from Dell. Huh? Pass over. Yeah. What's Dell running for? CV Solid Waste Management. All right. And we're waiting to hear back from uh, Ron Krauth on Central Vermont Regional, Regional Planning Commission. So I would say we could we could make the motion. And I I bet yes. If he says I don't want it, then we got to find somebody else. Okay. We make that motion. Sure. Okay, Randy makes the motion. I'll Victor. Sign it up. Okay, all those in favor of Ron Krauth to be Middlesex representative to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Are you no, opposed or I'm, you're not I'm abstaining? I'm oh, okay. I'm I'm looking. You're not really um, into this voting tonight, Liz. I know. Well, I'm looking uh, for the emails from Sarah. Oh, okay. Oh, you want, the, you want her email? I've got it right here. No, it's, it's the other oh, one. Oh, it's another one. I probably have that one too. It's just that I have like three inboxes. Okay, select so board emails. Here we go. Okay. You got it? I think so. And I found the email box. Okay. Was that on our. Uh... You know what the problem is? Is that Sarah does not send the agendas to my work, to this email. She sends it to my home email. Oh, she said. Can I ask for a clarification on Larry Becker and John Udis? What did you appoint him to? That was the Conservation or the? The Conservation Commission. It is the Conservation Commission. Commission. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. So where are we? We are. Do you want the one right here? You want this one? I've got it. I mean, the town list of the development review board budget committee. We did that one, that one. Okay. Approval of the fifth. Minutes. Are we on that? Yep. Okay. Yep. We're done no, with no, us. we're on number 11. Uh, review, discuss. Oh, right. Okay. So that's where she sent us this model rules of so procedure. I'd like to pass that over because I haven't had a chance to look at yeah, it. Me and too. as far as I'm concerned, we do generally, I mean, she says we don't follow Robert's rules of order, but I think in general we do. 
um, to the best of my knowledge, but I haven't read Roberts and I haven't read the other one. Yes. Do we want to, uh, can I back up? You may do whatever you wish. Well, you know, I like to be uh, polite. Do you want to fire warden? We didn't do Jason. Merrill. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. I do apologize for that. No problem. If that's the biggest problem you have tonight, Victor. It's going to be a good night. I didn't hear it. That's all right. And I had my ears cleaned. You might have been on the phone with that emergency. Oh, okay. So I just uh, okay. On a related but unrelated topic, I just I promised my wife if she got hearing aids, I'd get tested. Guess what? I tested worse than her. Oh my God! And now I'm in trouble. My my hearing looks like this: eighty percent, eighty percent, eighty percent. Boom! Right off the cliff. Huh. That's terrible. So I guess I'm getting hearing aids. Yuck. Anyway, she now hears like an eagle. It's scary what she hears. <laughs> I used to be able to hide. There's no hiding anymore. <laughs> So are we in agreement that we're going to pass over the yes. Robert's rules thing? Okay. The modified rules. Is yes. Passing over, yeah. Come on, sure. But I agree it's important to look at. It is. Especially with, and it would be good to have Bridget here. Uh, so we need to approve the February 21 and February 28th. What? Oh, the February 21 select board and the February 28th informational meeting minutes. Action likely. And I think we were all at both of those. Is that correct? Um, yes. I was there. Yep. I think we were. So I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from both meetings. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, thank you. All in favor of approving the minutes for the February 21st select board meeting and the February 28th informational meeting, aye. please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, review and possible amending the agenda for the March 14th special select board meeting. Oh, that was just that VIA is not going to come to that meeting, I think. What does that say? Reviewing and possibly amending the agenda for March 14th special select board meeting. No, March 14th is next week. Yes, correct. And that was the day it that... It is what? Isn't today March 14th, 14th is today. today. Oh, you made it. Okay. Hi. Hey. Okay. Welcome. Oh, yes. No, everything's fine. I was on the in the waiting room for Zoom. There's nobody else. Oh, up the here. internet's down, unfortunately. Okay, that's probably yeah. why. So Sorry we'll about that. Over. That's okay, not to worry. Okay. I huh. apologize. Yeah, that's, that's okay. interesting. We've just been problem. marching okay. down our list of reappointments, so you haven't missed. Uh, no, I know Larry show was trying to. There. He was going to get on, too. Nice to meet you, Vic. That's funny. Welcome. Hey, gang. Yes, welcome. So sorry. Are you familiar with. So, Bridget, with do, you know the, do you know the rest of us? Who are you on I haven't met, but I've been watching. Big fan, everybody. Okay. I'm your audience. <laughs> right. Welcome. We're excited. We're excited to have you here. <laughs> and Dorinda, do you, and you yeah, we yep. met yep. town meeting okay, day. Great. Yep. Good. Um, so we are. Uh, we just finished appointing all the people. Sure. This is our, our meeting where we appoint people. So it's been fairly boring. Yeah. Um, but we did skip over um, this section of the Roberts rules. Well, the modified Roberts rules. We want to. We want to have a chance to really read through it, which none of us have. Oh, okay. And pass it over for another meeting. Okay. Um, and then we just approved the minutes. And now, where are we at? Uh, the next on the. You were so doing there was the no agenda, March fourteenth agenda for the. That's today's meeting. Today's the fourteenth. Yes. Yeah. Today's so. the fourteenth. Um, I don't because know this why is that the, would be this, there. I don't understand that because this is this is the special agenda. meeting. The next week's when meeting is the, is the regular, regular meeting. One. Right. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's just some weird. So we'll but just. But was was v, VIA was supposed to come on the twenty first, which is next week. Right. And that we're not going to have them come to. Okay. But, so I'll change this to the revise this to say the twenty first and put v, um, VIA not coming. Yeah, and and yeah. so. Make it the 21st and cross out special. That's what I'm yeah. doing. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. But I'm not sure that that's really what she's implying because I'm not but sure I've, she knows that much about it. Reviewing and amending this agenda makes that no we're sense. Yeah, that makes no sense. Through doesn't 
Makes sense. And well, we don't need, do we have an agenda for next meeting? She did two agendas before she left. Okay, so um, let's see. It says 314 agenda. I wonder if she's also confused. Yeah, because she. Uh, no, that's, no, that was. She said I will do, I did both agendas and but I only saw the one. Okay, so yeah, I, I thought, saw the one. I thought you got maybe one. the second. I did not get the second one. Let me just see. Yeah, no, there's... I'm, I'm looking at the email right now, Liz, and there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. Um, right. Well, um, I wonder if she has it, like, saved somewhere. Do you know where yeah, she saves I'll her look files, Dorinda? Probably on the computer. We'll check it out. And Okay. Okay. Oh. So this this next thing is Sandy Fitzhume who called me um, the other day. And at the four K. Uh, this was that's different. And what's this? Applying for a community capacity building mini grant of four thousand dollars. Yeah, that's Sandy. No, she was looking for no, support the... of this uh, code compliance and enforcement. Right. That's this at six thirty. We, we're still up here, considering applying for community capacity building mini grant. That's not Sandy. Right. That Sandy's down here at right. six thirty. But for this other business. I don't understand what this is. Okay, I mean, this is related to what Randy and I have been talking about. This is this $500,000 opportunity to apply for up to 500,000 to do energy upgrades on municipal buildings. Before, they don't even have that grant released yet, but before we can apply for that, we have to apply and get this community capacity building mini grant of $4,000. Um, and so okay, and it says it. funds may be used to hire a consultant to identify candidate municipally owned buildings in need of energy efficiency improvements and provide grant application assistance for free energy resilience assessments. So it's somebody to help us through the process to get into yes. the line for the grant, yes. for the next grant. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something that we have to do. We're, there's, there's no action tonight. We're just telling you about this. Okay. And, um, and that... Um, there, there could be, um, so actually it was Lowry and the Energy Committee, it was Sam Lash from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission who came to the energy meeting and told him that in order for us to access that 500,000, you do need to do this first to get in line, like Randy said. But they could also, we could also use some of those funds if we wanted, like if the Middlesex Energy Committee um, wanted, you know, to include some sort of like, you know, energy awareness day or something for $500, we could include that in this grant. So it's not just about doing the energy audit of the building, it's, it has other um, opportunities as well. Um, the, and the re reason I'm saying that is because um, this, you know, right now we have VIA going through the building, and part of what we were going to do with VIA was also the do some stuff. sort of energy stuff, right? Which I think this is pretty basic. This is like having someone come in and, like, you know, kind of do like a little assessment. So, Eric, when I had talked with Eric about it, uh, they were in the process of receiving proposals from folks like CX Associates and, and more professional firms that that's exactly what they do is energy assessments on okay. all these types of business businesses and that would be allowed under the larger grant um, but it would be a requirement to have some sort of energy assessment so I'm guessing that this is part of that getting into that queue I'm not familiar so much with this as yeah. I am with the conversation that I had with Eric, but there, it could be that there's moving targets there too. Right, and so, right, and so like this is funds may be used to hire a consultant to identify municipally owned buildings in need of energy, right? So like they could go to the that would be all our go to the garage, they go to the fire department, right? So this isn't like a professional coming in and doing an energy audit for $4,000. This is something else. It's like walkthroughs. Yes, it's walkthroughs, exactly. So we need to do this first before, um, and I don't, and you know, I don't even know if it has anything to do like with 
VIA? Like, do they even need to be involved in us doing this piece? Probably not. Um, so long and short is... Isn't it... I mean, so really the only reason we're doing that is so we can apply for the big money. It's, yes, yeah. Well, yeah. we should do it then. So, oh, and I, this is what I was going to tell you. The Energy Committee was going to help us apply for it. <laughs> they can were going to do it. Can I add something? Yeah. We got in our emails today that the VLCT is putting on a, pro, okay. a free program on this on the 18th. Of April. For, of April. Okay. So if you want Yes, I do to, want to definitely register for that. Did, um, did so I get that email? I don't know. It came through. You um, got that? I got it as a treasurer. That's where they're talking. Right I don't there. think that I. I don't think I got it either. Yes. Would you oh, mind like, forwarding no, no, no. it? Oh, it's here. Oh, it is. Is it there? Oh. So I okay. got it as part of the town. It's uh, from that info at VLCT. Yeah, that was from. Uh, and that on was our from email. today from, at nine ten. Um, I mean, on our Sarah's original email. Yes. email, I got that one. Oh, okay. okay. So you. guys, you just said on this oh, yeah, I got thing. Yes, that you can have somebody. I think I believe I heard Liz say you can. It's not just for this building. It could be for some other building. Is that correct? Yeah, any municipal building. I really seriously think that some some of us should take a look at the town garage. There's a on the door on the on the right uh, left hand door as you're facing the back. There's a gap that wide. The whole length of that door, I mean, you could actually yeah. put your, you know, you could stick a wood truck to it. Well, here's the beauty of this 500000 I don't think we could spend 500000 on this town hall for the specific work that has to be done, but you could probably have a whole list of things that you apply for to have done. So you could include, like, the town shed in that 500000 for weatherization but stuff. Like, they're not going to, I don't think they're going to pay for, like, windows, right? I don't think that's what this does. You might, you might be surprised. Okay. It, and anything energy efficiency related is what I was told. So there's some component of that. The good thing is we don't have windows in the windows town garage. Whatnot. Well, whatever, like yeah, insulation. Windows in the doors, whatever, right? Yeah. Small ones, yeah. Yeah. But, but here's the reality. This is going to be a big project, right? And we are like full-time workers. And so I'm not sure like how... We're gonna. I mean, maybe Sandy will have the capacity to help, and some retired people will have the capacity to help. But this is not like something that you know. Oh, I'll just spend an hour and work on this, right? Like this is a big deal. Although they've said they 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 don't want to make the grants really cumbersome. They want municipalities. <laughs> that's what they, and that's, that's what, what they Central always Vermont say. Regional Planning Commission is there to help with, right? But I'm just saying it's going to take hours, regardless of volunteer real work. time and real work to get this done. Um, Is there a deadline for it? Uh, no, it's it's not. Uh, I mean, I think it's a couple of years that we have to apply for it. Oh, the really? Big that Five hundred, not this four thousand, but the. I think it has a. You know, there's a time frame of when you can use the money. Well. But we're going to learn if we have it. Yeah, this says it's going to be weatherization, thermal efficiency, supplementing or replacing fossil fuel heating systems with more efficient renewable or electric alternatives. So that's what they're going to, it would cover. So all you're looking for, Liz, is for us to say yes, go for it? I'm just telling you, yeah, you, we don't, there's no motion needed. I'm just, yeah. Oh, there's no motion needed? No, not right now. We're not, I so mean, sure, possible. if you want to move that we'll apply for the grant, that's fine. I do. We ought to have it in the minutes, I think. Yeah. Shouldn't we? Sure. I'll move that we, that we uh, apply for that $4,000 grant. Okay. Is there a second? A second. It. Here's your chance. <laughs> hey, you want to do it? Go ahead. Okay, <laughs> Vic, you, you got it. Okay, Get your I name in the minutes. for the MERP grant. <laughs> this is for time. only the okay. 4000 <laughs> Yes, we do. <laughs> there will be other opportunities. There will be other opportunities. Don't you yeah. worry. Actually, and can we add to that that we will get assistance from the Energy Committee to um, on this grant application? Okay. On this one, yes. Yeah, on this one. All Aye. in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, April 18th at 10. I just put it on my calendar. Highway report. So if the two of us are going yes. to attend, if anybody else is going to, they may want to. 
Let's yeah. just talk about it. Okay, yeah. All right. What are we calling this? The uh... highway report. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got our truck back last Thursday, the Kenworth. And uh, the one with the rate hole in the radiator. Finally on Thursday. Jesus. We went down Tuesday to get it. I told yeah, you told story. me the story. Yeah. Great. We went back. They called and it was the wrong truck. So they went all the way down there only to find that the truck wasn't ready. Yeah, oh, Eric, God. Eric was telling me about it at, at town at the voting booths here. Well, the second trip was better because at least we had to get cutting edges down at the, uh, well, what's their name? They're the people that put the uh, plow on in South Burlington. The other thing is Eric's taken off uh, for a week, April 9th. Good for him. Let's hope there are no big and snowstorms we're, that week. And we're, we're going to appoint and ask Randy to uh, be the uh, acting road foreman over the local road crew. This Randy? Yeah. He's being sarcastic. Okay. He's turning red. <laughs> yeah, I know he did. <laughs> um, that makes me I a little bit nervous. You. It makes me a little bit nervous, you know. Because that's going to be... Is that mud season? Mud time, big time. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Where's he uh, Where's he going? Florida. It's when he asked, when he hired... No, he asked, I remember. Him, I remember. When he was hired, and it's just been pushed back. Yeah. Yep. But that's just, probably something you could help with, right, Nick? We, oh, yeah. I mean, because didn't we just select you? That's what I'm sure. <laughs> <sighs> And the snow is not going to help our mud season either. Now we're supposed to have another one on the 24th. What? A snowstorm, Vic? Looks like this one on the 24th, Roger Hill said. Yep. How do you know 10 days out? Roger I, knows. Roger knows. <laughs> okay. It, it's nothing, you know, we'll, I'm sure they will monitor it. Anything else of import? Any update on our chipper? Do we know what the status? I mean, is that is it? Do we know for sure it's a dead duck? I mean, really? Pretty much. And how do we know? I mean, uh, metal Eric in the was oil. Taking it up. Eric loud was, clanking noises when you try and start it. Yeah, Eric was taking it up to the. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name. Just up the road. Lewis. No, the guy next to him that's got the garage. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. No, not Abe. The guy next to him. Oh, the guy next Free, to him. Freeland, it's automotive place. Is that oh, what you're talking you. about? Yes. Yeah. Okay. How many out? Yes. How many hours do you think that you guys need initially between where you are now and fixing this one or get replacing it? Because I have, um, I don't. I, we'd have to check with my insurance um, company, but uh, I have one with a 15-inch that is owned by one of our companies that we could rent to you. Well, that might be a good option. Might be a good option. Yep. I mean, we've got, with these storms, we have branches down and stuff down all over, all over town. Yep. So, make a note of that in the minutes starting to, mm -hmm. so we and don't lose you track get, of that. But that's, and did you get the uh, copy of, uh, did anybody get the, maybe Dorinda, did, did Eric send you a, the copy of the uh, uh, the proposal for paving um, the Shady Rail? No. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Okay. We'll get that to you. It's around 300000 So. That's a, that's a bad, that's a, that section is really bad now. Have you been over it? it? So I was going to say that went up from the original quote that we got, right? Quite a bit. Didn't we get something a while back? Uh, no, it was actually cheaper than uh, than what. Uh, oh. Because I thought we had enough money left from the last paving project that we would much, be I, able I to cover it. I can't remember how much we had left. I don't have it off the top of I my head, it. but. Can I just ask an evil question? Why don't we turn that section of road back into dirt? Well, you can if you want. I mean, why? 
I don't understand why that section of road, I, I understand why the road got paved up to the school, I get it. But that, that section from the, from the corner up, why isn't that like every other class three road in town? And why are we spending uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars to have it? that, it would happen. You want us to just go do it on our own? I don't, I just, I, I'm, I just think gonna, you, I'm just, there's no reason really, if that's what you want I to mean, do. I mean, just because it's, just because it's paved now, does that mean, it doesn't mean we have to always keep it paved. Did it get paved just because we had a grant at one point in time? And I don't, that's that, the only that time the we've ever done paving. But I think, I think the, pl and this is a long time ago, but the plan was eventually to pave up over and through. So, you know, there was a paved throughway through town and that was just one section of it and it never got beyond that. Um, but obviously the sub base in that thing has gotten worse than. Uh, well, it's bad, it, it's bad now. And the other thing I'm concerned about is if all we do is peel up the pavement and put down a le another level of pavement, this, the this sub base is horrible. Call, this bid does call for uh, reclaiming down 14 inches. Okay. But I don't know as your problem is between zero and 14 inches. It's more like between zero and four feet. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Would you say it came in at three something? 295. 295. Yeah. Larry says, because he was trying to get onto the Zoom, that it's nobody's showing no, up. No, he's saying that the message is waiting for hosts to start the meeting. Yes, yeah. okay, so something's wrong. I thought right. everybody was something. late. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay. It's fine. Um, he wants to call in about. He wants to hear what this last agenda item is. But I, I told him to call in when we get to it. Okay. Um, I don't know, Victor. I don't know. I don't I mean, either. I don't. It does, and, and it does not make it. It does not make sense to me. And that little section of paved road connected to Terra Street and East Hill Road doesn't make any sense either. We are looking at that. I'm trying to get some get that in. We did. I think he did look at that. Yeah. When I say it's the guy's name is Joe Montang, and he works for Pike Industries. And he did look at. It. And Eric went over with him. Okay. But we don't have pricing on that at this point. No. And what section? This was. That's the Terra Street section. That little, that I call it no man's land. That little. Over by Pembroke Heights there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's a little rough there. Now. Okay. Here we go. Re. Reclaim and fine grade. Uh, Shady Will Road, uh, five five thousand two hundred ninety feet, machine paved, two and a half inch binder, inch and a half wearing course. So that's what was up here. Yeah, basically reconstruct. It's a little scary how two ninety six bumpy this road has gotten over the. <laughs> how much two ninety six? Five hundred and fifteen dollars. Yeah. I can forward that to you. I think from my phone. My phone doesn't like to do that, but. Aren't you just treasurer? Mm -hmm. See, if this was my, my computer, it would pop on. I'll send it to you when I get home. Yeah, no problem. I just, if you want me to just keep track of it, you know, I'll just put it in the file. Wait, tre what is your, I can say. It's, it's treasurer at middlesexvermont.org. There's no, no dot? No, just treasure. Um, yeah, and that, that way we can compare how much money's in the paving budget. Because that's scheduled for this year, twenty twenty four. Yeah, twenty twenty four budget. Right, right, correct. This calendar year. Anything else, Victor? Um, the award for that grant. That's um, we have that information too. Shane put together that grant. Yeah, that so that's what for. I was saying. Between, I, I have that and. The money, because I think we had it covered 100%. You 
when I'm just initially. Not the grant amount that we. I don't have. I, at. I've got it at home, but. You all set, Vic? I am. I think I can't okay. remember anything else. Okay. Well, if you think of it, we're still here. Okay. Dorinda. Um, Treasurer's report. Nothing I gave you the budget. This is as of the end of February, so it yep. doesn't include any orders that we've done for March. Um, so. Is there anything of particular concern or? No, I mean, it's the oh. usual, just the usual stuff. Um, I can't remember, and maybe Vic remembers, the specialized services. What did we put into that category? I can look, but I just didn't know because that one's over. We budgeted 20 and it's at 31,000. So I was trying to think what went into that category. Yeah, no, okay. That was the only thing that when I saw this, it popped out at me really was how we got. But I think we, we did knowingly put something in there, and I can't remember what it was. How much money was it originally? Thirty. We budgeted for twenty, and we put thirty, almost thirty-one thousand in. This year, this fiscal year. Yeah, we did put in thirty. We spent thirty-one thousand. Was oh? Called. It was something. I can't remember what. Specialized well, services. Was that the salt I shed? I spoke to her and John Rayner. I think it was. I think it was. I told her. Wasn't it? Even a blind squirrel. We would like to because it wasn't on the agenda. I think it's the salt shed. Anymore. Maybe that was it. So it would be likely that we would consider it next week. Okay. So. Okay. Well, that wasn't so that much money, was it though? Going. I don't know. 30 this year and 30 next year. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is what we've spent is 31,000 in that category. Because the paving for that salt shed was only 14,000. 14 or 15. And then we authorized Eric to spend another three or so on concrete blocks. Okay, so how much was it? 31? How much did we spend? 31? We spent 31,000. I don't know. I'll look at I can get the detail on it. That was the only thing that really popped out. That was. That wasn't our culvert stuff. I don't remember. Oh yeah, your freight liner. The tra the uh, transfer case is gone in it. It's making a lot of noise. Oh. Transfer case is eighteen thousand oh. dollars. There's no warranty, so we pulled the uh, we pulled the shaft and and uh, stuff. And it's a two wheel drive now. With. Uh, We've had to put chains it isn't on. just it isn't just a bad chain or something that can be. What the transfer case? Yeah, readily replaced. It sounded like it might be like a carrier bearing or something like that. It's based well, on we're what, going I, to... what I talked with Eric about. Did he have any luck finding a bearing to to replace that? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna when things slow down, we'll take the transfer case out and rebuild it. There you Hopefully. go. Now you're talking. Yeah. yeah did you see our repairs like? It's only like ten grand so far this year, and uh, Eric does most of that. <laughs> We've had a lot of success doing that in the past. That's all I would say. And if we can find a used motor to put in that chipper, that would be a win. New or like new chippers are. Very expensive. Yeah. yeah, ours is about a year old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the problem is we don't use it that much, but when we need it, we need it. So it comes down to it's like the roadside mowing. Do we buy a big tractor to do our roadside mowing, or do we rent it when we use it? You don't have to have a trailer, like a 20-ton trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I have a delivery truck. <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, I think we I think we spent close to 60 on it. Yeah. Yep. 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 It isn't like we're out there cutting trees every week or even every month, mm -hmm. you know, but right. when we need it, we need it. Definitely get a slug of work, you know, in the springtime when you got to clean stuff up or through the winter. Oh, no, in that's a right. Time, time like this where there's trees that are just falling over everywhere. I mean, you drive around town before this last snow and you could see all the trees and branches that are down from the wintertime. I appreciate my beloved neighbor who has these big popple trees. They fall over in the road, but the 
the top of the poplar tree falls on my land and the road crew conveniently chops it off and pushes it even <laughs> further on my land. God Whichever bless Whichever is easier, that's who gets it. Yeah, no, I understand. I know the rules. Um, anything else, Dorinda? Not for treasure. Okay. So, 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 I think we're getting there. The oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. So, um, other business. We have this correspondence from Santa Fitzium, um requesting select board endorsement for application for a Federal Department of Energy grant to develop better administration of Vermont energy codes. I, uh, I talked to her about that, and uh, I also spoke to uh, John Rayhill today. He was nice enough to drive me down to Hanover for my treatment. Um, John generally thinks it's a good idea. He wants to look at it, look at it some more. I mean, right now, as you know, the scenario is we have a statewide building code, but there's virtually no enforcement. I mean, we have no enforcement in Middlesex. We have our energy committee who tries to cajole people to pay attention, but, you know. But that said, you know, as with all these things, the camel's nose under the tent, right? Once you create this monster, it's going to be another state, gigantic state agency, bureaucracy, you know, who knows what. So before we say, oh, sure, put our name on it, I want to think about it some more, and I want to read some more about it. She sent me a very, probably the same email uh, Sarah got, but basically a very short email. Maybe and, John could come and explain it to us. Yeah. That would be helpful to me. Yeah. Um, he was going to try and zoom in tonight, but of course, guess what? <laughs> um, yeah, nobody's popping up, so there's a problem someplace. Yeah. Well, my interim, that went down about 3.30. Well, anyway. So that so what they're saying though is that this would be through Kevin Thompson. He would be monitoring that for us. No, no I don't no. think so. This would be this would be a state agency doing it. I've more only government more government. Yeah, yes. I've only gotten through a little uh, probably half of the proposal that they put together, and and they're trying to essentially establish positions at the state that are going to enforce code compliance in the energy in the energy world and they're not even talking about in the in the regular building um yeah, this is just the, the energy this is just part of energy uh alone and you know that raises some concerns for me i mean I, and i'm an energy guy i you know i live in that world but you know at the end of the day um i have had some folks reach out to me and ask to talk with me about it and i haven't had a chance to finish reading so i would support passing over for tonight yep yep Any other matter that may come before the board? Are you guys going to do goals this year? <laughs> uh, that wasn't goals. on the list. I'm surprised. No, Sarah no, 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 it. no. She, goals are goals are for our next meeting since we do the goals. Do one. such a good job on our goals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our treasurer laughs facetiously. I have something that I don't know if the board wants to talk about as a whole or, or sure. what, but just some. Reviewing, uh, you know, timesheets and the way that we're approving and entering time and paying for time in here. Um, it's my understanding that uh, personal time off or paid time off um, would be allowed to be used up to that 40 hour uh, threshold. And we're not essentially oh, buying out paid time off. Um, I don't think we've ever bought up paid time off. Is that what they're doing? It got in in essence, um, not as directly as that, but um, like in in this week's or this this cycle's uh, timesheets, you know, we've got um, folks that are putting in for forty seven hours with none of it being overtime hours, um, and uh, some of it being personal and sick time. So, like. For example, but then getting paid overtime for that? No, they're not they're getting, getting paid no. overtime. Pay for it, straight so time. They're like straight buying time. out their extra time. Yeah, but the yeah. personal and sick time, in my mind, gets them to cover their covered forty-hour work week, mm -hmm. and not extending beyond that forty hours. Um, like if you if you if you've worked forty hours, 
you don't need to take personal time above and beyond that or sick right. time above and beyond that. Correct. But what's happening for them is that they are, because they might have like, you know, taken a personal day right. on half of a Monday and then worked late on Friday. And, and then that day, that time right. is overtime. And that, well, no, it's not it's because not, it's not it's not actually because it's got to be forty hours, it's gotta be of, 40 hours time. of straight yeah. time. Right. So yeah. even though they're even though they're not getting we paid had this overtime, conversation we, before. yes, and they weren't supposed to do that. They're not supposed to do it. That uh, my, it, I don't see the time sheets until after the check is cut, and you know, and um, I think that. There needs to be a clearer understanding of, I mean, and I'll have a conversation with Eric on it that he's clear on it, and I'll have one with Cheryl on it. Cheryl was aware, and I don't know why, okay. but this was also just happened just with the newest person. Right, right. this was, this has never happened with Eric before. The, the, yeah, so I don't think this was. No, we've addressed, we've addressed the issue else uh, other times. Other and that times, seems but not like since Eric's been on. That enough, seems yeah. like it's follow, fallen off on the existing employees with the new employees. I think they're, right. um, they're right. putting the time in and, and Eric's looking at it and improving it and right. then it's making it to payroll and because mm -hmm. Eric's approved it, then she's just approving and paying it. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, anyway, I just wanted to bring that up and suggest that you know we have we a follow-up follow yeah. conversation with both Cheryl and Eric. So, exactly what Dorinda had just said. Yep. yep, yep. So while we're on that subject, I have a question. Sure. So, our payroll system is tied in with our accounting system, correct? It's part of NEMRIC. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's no automated functionality to that. It's a manual, fill out the time card, and somebody has to enter the... Yes, so the timesheets have to be added up manually, and then we enter that into the computer. So what happens is each department head or the people, they're supposed to submit the timesheet totaled, and yep. then Cheryl is supposed to do a check and balance and re-add to make sure that um, you know that it was added up right, and then it manually gets entered into the computer. By whom? By Cheryl. By Cheryl. So, is that the most effective way for us to handle payroll for whatever it is, eight people? Well, I mean, there are all kinds of. Do it. There are all kinds of. Very. Well, it would be a matter of having some kind of software that somebody would have to sign into and sign out of, and um, and then you have, which is probably a good time topic of discussion. I mean, you've got people like Sarah who really doesn't punch a clock, but yet she turns in a timesheet. Yeah. So you know, there's, um, and then you have all your. Your zoning administrator, are you going to set something up for them? Your Mitch, all of those, your listers. Well, I, so, I, during, I, get, I get all of but, that. So you would have to have something, some kind of software that everybody could sign into, punch in daily, punch out daily. All I'm, all I'm saying is there are programs out there that oh, do there that is. very, very simply yeah. and very effectively. The employee goes online. Yeah. Fills out his timesheet, supervisor yeah. approves it, zim zam boom, does but all the calculating, it, does all the. But it still has to be entered into. No, memory. I understand. I understand. But the but the nuts and bolts of putting it all together. But so here's a good example that if the employee went and they were putting in all this stuff, the software needs to be capable of kicking this out and kicking out this exception because. If somebody put in for 47 hours and they shouldn't have gone over 40 hours, that you know. Well, but then you good. have the exception if they worked overtime, right. they do. But it's get the to responsibility. It's the responsibility of the supervisor to right. review the time cards. I mean, the time cards. Well, all it is is an automated way of generating, of generating the time cards and having. I, I'm just. No, it's out there. The other thing Eric does is all of the highway crews is coded out. So he also, on his end, keeps how much time the person spent grading, how much time they spent working in the shop, 
um, how much time they did certain activities. Those automated programs do all. And, right. all. All I'm saying is, at some point in your travels and in your treasurer's mm -hmm. duties, you hear of a town that's using something like that, I think it'd be worth looking at because it really is slick. And everybody's suspicious of it when they start out, but it, it really works, really works. And you're not generating these timesheets, which Randy pours over. I mean, there are, there are timesheets, but they pop right up on the screen on the computer. And we could all have access to but I don't know, just, just an idea. My only hesitation I mean, typically is, those are expensive. Yeah. I don't know what we pay yeah. now. I mean, obviously, this is super cheap because we're printing off paper. Quick, <laughs> quick, quick books, I think it's like $300 a year or something like that. Per user. You want it to be easy no, 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 to no, put no, into the, You don't packet. want it to be like double duty for Well, everybody. it's not, I mean, it really isn't that difficult. You know, it's. I think, I think it's just the process. It's and, the process and, of just, you know, everybody understanding what counts and what doesn't count. And, you no, know. no, no, I understand. This, uh, this would not in any way solve that problem. Right. I understand that. I mean, that's where it's the supervisor's responsibility and you and Cheryl as the as the basically Cheryl, but but you at the at the head of the head of the pylon, just making sure it's being done correctly. Right. But yeah. I, all I'm saying is just just a yeah, thought. Yeah. No, we can we can certainly keep it out. Um, it, it's, I mean, we're not dealing with that many timesheets to be honest with you. You've got four people on the road crew, and you've got Sarah's who's like. Carbon copy every week. Yeah, but all, the, all the more I say, with that, all the more reason to make it simple if you can. Well, I, I mean, they, hers. I don't even know why she turns in a timesheet. If you want to, you know, that's where I'm going with this. She's going to get paid her salary no matter what. Well, I, I mean, it makes no sense to me that she turns in. How a about timesheet. that becomes a goal? But but I think that's part of, and that's what I'm, you know. And again, I think you know, one of your goals should be looking at. Certainly, the whole personnel policy, how things are done, and this and that. But, um, it's on the list. but it was hers is done because it's never off the list, is it? You put her fifty-one percent here and forty-nine percent here, and yeah. But all, all you crazy. have to do is say her salary is X, X for this position and Y for this position. Right. Well, there that you does go. bring up a complication, though, in my mind, and it's probably. Maybe you guys have talked or thought about it before, but let's. We just went through town meeting. She got she got elected for town clerk, but right. she's a hired position as a select board assistant. That's right. correct. Are we then firing her as a select board assistant if somebody else gets uh, selected as a as a town clerk? Not necessarily. They're um, two separate yeah. positions. So I, I I just jumped into my head no, when you just and, said and that. So. Um, you know, it's likely it's likely that she would resign as select board assistant if she was no longer town clerk. I would say so. Theoretically, it, it one goes. And you have the same issue with Cheryl. She's the assistant town clerk, and she's also the bookkeeper. They should be separated as two separate positions. Right. Yeah. And they should. Not, well, you know, but she codes them differently, doesn't she? She does. She codes them, you know, differently. But okay. Alrighty. Have we had enough fun this evening? At some point, we would. Yep. You know, you're talking about time and stuff, and probably uh, what we were talking about earlier is the uh, overtime. Yeah. I think overtime should go to eight and a half. Anything over eight hours instead of over forty. Because, In a day, you mean? Yeah. Because what people do is. You know, yeah, that makes sense. And it's we, not budgeted. We'd have to budget it, but it creates uh, an issue when, uh, especially in the summer. You know, because they're only working forty hours, they'll take more time off during the summer. Right. But they work ten-hour days in the summer. So how do you handle that? What? Ten-hour days that they work in the summer. Move them to a eight-hour work Move day, them to five an eight days hour a week. Day, I think, and that's the other thing. The other thing, <laughs> this eight-hour, this uh, ten-hour. I thing, mean, I, I, I this ten-hour thing. And, uh, you know, I, they don't agree with me, but I firmly believe it should only be from, uh, you know, uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day. The ten-hour day. 
Huh? The ten hour day. The four tens. Yeah, four tens. And are you if at all. But are you ask are are you suggesting I guess I don't understand, are you suggesting that like let's say it's the middle of winter, right? Mm -hmm. And we get a snowstorm on a um, Tuesday and they work you don't need to twelve hours on that day. Okay. You don't need Gender, to um, okay. On the Friday, you don't say, okay, you work 12 hours to keep it under 40. We're going to give you four hours off on Friday. And you take the rest of Friday off. And therefore, you're in the 40-hour week. Or I don't think you, you can force them to do that. It, it creates a lot of resentment. Right. Okay, but the, my, my, my question is, if you, then if you're saying that somebody works 10 hours in one day and you're, you are expecting them, doesn't matter what that day of the week is, you're still expecting them to work eight hours every day, then they'll automatically get overtime for that two hours because you're telling them, and, or are you saying right now, that's not how we do it. Not right now it's that, oh, you know, well, I, let's try to keep it at 40 because we don't really need you here Friday afternoon. Everything's done and you guys worked really hard and you need a break. Or are you saying, I guess I don't understand, why wouldn't you give them overtime for an hour day? Well, you could do it both ways. I mean, you could say that the work week is four days and it's four tens. But if it's five days and you work more than eight, then really from the employee's standpoint, that should be, say they work over, so over their eight hours over the course of those first four days, then they're sick on Friday. They should really get that eight hours. Their I position is they should really get that eight oh. hour sick day. They should get the eight hours sick day, and if, they should get over. If they if, if they, they work if they five work. eight five eight hour days, so, so there's a there's a difference here between yeah. their request to work four ten hour days. Right, it would have throughout. to be a different a different setup when they do the four tens. Yeah, you'd have, have to, to be in agreement with them. The umbrella would be this is the way it's set up, but if it is five days, then because um, yeah, but it, isn't it creates the, problems. Isn't the law forty? It, it is. I believe it is. That's yeah. that may be the but, that may be the standard that you have to meet, but it doesn't mean that you can't be more generous than that and adopt a policy right. that the goes state. outside yeah. of what that is to say state is more paying. Generous. Well, so if you're in my opinion, if over you pay overtime huh? after eight, over eight hours, hours a day, you're being more generous than if you just right. say at forty hours a week you earn overtime. We are we already you know factor in vac uh, holiday time and things like that as work time, um, and not just you know taking that off and saying it has to be work time to turn overtime. So you're you're being a little bit more generous there than the minimum standard. I don't. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we should decide that tonight. Or just if we could have a conversation when Eric's here. Sure. I think it warrants I, I a conversation. Yeah. It makes on, the employees on, really happy on both sides. Right. Mm -hmm. I misunderstood what he's saying. Well, you're going to hear it again. I will. We'll have another I, chance. Yeah. I, I didn't realize he was talking about regular 10 hour days. I thought he was talking about you happen to be 10 hours in a day. And I've said this publicly before I hate the 10 hour days. Yeah, I do. You, you hate them? I don't hate them. I don't think that. I yeah, don't, I, I, yeah, I don't. I, from I don't an, think it's very good. From you know, an like employee well, standpoint, and our our agency does this for the folks that are out in the field working the construction side of the business, is that that four ten hour day is they truly feel like that is a benefit to them. Of course they do. Of course and, they do. And the the but conversation. But what are you doing? But what are you doing? Me. Or them. What are your crews? Yeah, what is the crew? What are those people doing? Crawling, crawling. They are actually through, working ten hours. Crawling through 150 degree attics yeah. all summer long. Right. What, what, when to when the they sites, stop, driving back. It's like putting plastic eyes in teddy bears. When you stop, <laughs> and you can come back Monday and you can pick that teddy bear up and start over again. There's nothing to change. What I'm saying is that in the summertime, you you get four tens, you know, and they say, well, we'll swap them around, but they don't. It doesn't happen is uh, you get, so you get four tens and, and then you get a good day or you get a holiday on Monday. I mean, so, last, last summer, sometimes we were going five, at least five days with nobody working, nobody grading, nobody doing anything. Cause they were all, they had that day off and, or and there was a holiday 
or they took and you, you So I think that's a management yeah, issue. I think so too. I don't think that's a policy issue. I think issue. that's a management I issue too. I think that's a management issue because at the end of the day, you're responsible for, for cycling through and approving vacation time and personal time. Um, not, to, not to make sure that if you're a production-oriented outfit, you need to maintain some that, sort of right? production. I don't understand that because if you're working four ten hours and it comes on Friday and Monday's a holiday, you get four days off. Sure, but if you approve me to take the two days prior to that off, and you approve everybody else to take okay. that two those two in days off, then production stops for that crew I don't think that happens, altogether. Though. No, in response to that, it's like. I don't know what our, exactly what our, our policy is on time off. I mean, you can't carry only so much time. I've got to take a day off or I'm, I'm going to lose it. Not even close to it. They, it's a very generous. It's like 270 hours you can carry over or something to that effect. So it's quite a few hours. It's and Randy, I, not Randy, um, Vic, I thought that, remember how we had these like crazy summers with rain yeah, and yeah. I thought you guys had sort of, you know, worked around and said, listen guys, we know that the forecast calls for rain on Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Could some of you work on Friday instead of having it off, right? That, yeah. And that happened, right? That makes you feel good. That makes the select board happen. feel, it doesn't happen. It didn't happen, okay. It's like, okay, and the right. other thing is. Fair enough. The other thing, this is my opinion, I'll probably get in trouble for it. You work a 10 hour day, uh, a lot of times. You're standing around. Yeah, you have to, you're lucky if you get eight. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I, we it's have that option at Capstone and I could not do a 10 hour day, honestly. It would be hard for me to do 10 hours of work straight. Nine, I could probably do, but yeah. 10, no. So, so anyways, these are all valid. This is a, this is a discussion for up. another day. I, yeah, I do think it goals. warrants getting on the agenda at some point in time yeah. to make goal. this a specific conversation yeah. Yeah. because this could take up a whole meeting. This is a goal. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Right but at right the now. same time, we want to make sure. No, I mean, I make take a minute. So it's got to be a goal. Is happy. Got to be a goal. And I, I, I would say, based on that comment as well, I would say that we would strenuously um, ask if they attend. Stay we well. can't force them to attend, but I would, I would, I would encourage, encourage them. them to attend a meeting like that and to listen have to input. the discussion. Yeah. Oh, they will. So they that will. they, so that they can speak their voice yeah. and what what they would like to see, um, because we could all sit here and talk about what we feel is right and what they what we think they're going to be happy with or whatever on both sides of it. But if they're if they're not here to represent themselves, I you know yeah. I feel like. But that's this on explains service. why they grade before a rainstorm because it's like oh well it's the only day we can grade this week. And it's hard. You can't predict rainstorms all the time, but you know, on some of those. But roads, that part of swapping time around, it happens once in a while. Yeah. But not on a regular. But not basis. like not the way that we would like to see it happen. But I can understand that. I'd want a three-day weekend. I mean, I don't know how Gary Lamell ever got away with it back in the day. I mean, if if they went to work at uh, five o'clock in the morning, when their eight hours were up, they went home. But well, now we stay there until two two thirty and get the overtime. And hey, this is my livelihood. Yeah, I, I need the money. Right. It's it's a management piece. We do kind of do it like Vic says, though, so that, so that there's three different chunks. There's your regular hours, and you get paid at your regular rate. Then if you go over within that day, you get your overtime rate. And then if you're sick on Friday, you get sick leave. And then they, it, and that's, and then that's charged at the regular rate. At eight right, hours, right, yeah. Right, right. So, and that makes folks happy. Hmm. But is there an incentive as far as wonder if you pay the person came in and they worked, you know, like crazy and got all this overtime and then took the rest of the week off? Is there that are we creating that chance of that happening? Absolutely. Try anything is possible. But what would the chances are? But why would you? Yeah. Why, if you're getting time policy. and a half, oh, why would you say, oh, I'll take sure. the rest of the week off? What Victor's talking about, though, is a p potentially presenting change to that policy. Right. I think we have a policy set, but right. what he's yeah. talking about is potentially changing 
the existing. To what gra- to what Bridget is talking about, which is that someone could use their sick time as part of their forty hours, mm-hmm. and get paid overtime for only working thirty six hours in that week, for example. Yeah, but they right. worked more than but eight they, hours in they, a day. They, they physically they worked, worked thirty six hours because right. it was. But then they took eight hours of sick, which made it, you know, forty two. I would just I would just tell you guys. No matter how you parse this out, there are going to be some people who like it and some people who don't like it. Always somebody unhappy. And, you know, my, my number one question, and don't get me wrong, is, and this is what bugs me about the 10-hour about the thing, is that sort of became a tradition. You know, it was approved once, and then it was approved again, and then it was approved, and pretty soon it's expected. And... I don't think it's to the town's benefit. Oh yeah, yeah. Some some Plus employees. Plus it grew by two months. On either, it can grew a month on either end of it. Lot. Well, well, the whole thing yeah. has just been an been an expanding. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You got employees who say, "I'm quitting if that's what happens." Yeah. Right. Okay. What do the other towns have? <laughs> there's, that's a whole a good question. there's a whole gamut. I think it's yeah. all over the place. Yeah. 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 And there's so many companies hiring. It's to get people know. to keep people happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's wait for a deep recession and then throw that out. How about a local bank failure? <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, what else? Happened. What else, sir? Um, I what? Can... Already happened. Chair, what oh. else? No, I think we are adjourned. I'm sorry. So, so, um, I need to get a different phone.